three, two, one. Thirty seconds down. We only have fifty-nine minutes and thirty seconds to go. Man, that was a weird thing, Justin Robert oh, Young. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was harder than I thought it would be. How in the hell are you guys doing? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you are not about to witness live the Weird Things podcast. However, sort of a tribute. Imagine the Weird Things podcast just died. Uh, yeah. But then two members were resurrected, and they're kind of just Robert Young and Brian Brushwood. But it's like Pet Cemetery versions Ex of exactly, us. Exactly, yeah. you know? And it's like, you're like, oh, I remember the Weird Things podcast. In fact, how many of you guys do remember the Weird Things podcast? Hands in the air if you're familiar. How many guys have never heard of the Weird Things podcast? Excellent. Many okay. more of you. <laughs> so for those of you guys who don't know, it's it's mainly ringleaded by Andrew Maine, right? You're the ones sure. who brought me in. Explain where that came from. <clears throat> Well, the Weird Things podcast started from the Weird Things site, uh, which was, we wanted to do a website about the paranormal and supernatural, and specifically those elements of society from skeptic points of view. Andrew uh, worked for the James Randi Educational Foundation for many years, running the Million Dollar Challenge. Uh, I was an intern at the James Randi Educational Foundation, and uh, we both kind of really enjoyed meta conversations about not whether or not these things are real, you know, which is its own fun thing to talk about, but assuming they're not real, uh, let's just indulge the fantasy of what would have had to happen if they were, or what would the repercussions be to ghosts and Bigfoot and goblins uh, in Africa and stuff like that. And, you know, that's where... Well, and, and I think that's what immediately attracted me to, uh, to, to your, not only the website, but the podcast as well, is that... Uh, the, it's tell me this isn't just me, but there seems to be an astonishing cross section between people who are passionate about debunking claims of the supernatural and people who love written literature about the supernatural. Yeah, there's a lot of us. <laughs> well, and and to me, it's like uh, yes, look, of course, we're all adults here. We all know that Sasquatch isn't real. But he's rad. He's really and, awesome. Uh, it's 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 like what, what, what part of it? Honestly, come up to this mic and you can tell me <laughs> what part of it like is not awesome. This crazy bipedal hairy monster is like walking amongst us in forests. Well, it's that's a, amazing. Well, and and of course, and and that's just the starting point, right? Like, uh, uh you know, we'll we'll find uh, oftentimes half the article, half the show tends to be uh, news. Or I'm gonna use three halves. Screw you. Uh, 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 some of the show tends to be news of the weird yeah. that oftentimes Andrew Maine will tell in almost like a Dungeon Master type um, uh, format. Uh, format where yeah. he sort of imagine, if you will, that you're in this this town, but there's something weird. There's a guy and a place and a thing, and we'll try to suss out like what the mystery is. And it's almost like a guessing game that he plays with us. And then it turns out to be a quote unquote real report, uh, almost always out of what's that Russian newspaper? Oh, Pravda. <laughs> yeah, at all, almost always uh, involving goblins or anacondas or whatever. Dude, if you want just, like, some really rad stuff in your life, <laughs> like, check out Pravda. Like, I know they have some branding problems, right? <laughs> <laughs> but they are wall-to-wall, -wall, really awesome, completely unsourced nonsense. So, <laughs> so uh, traditionally what you get in skeptic media is, here's the story, here's what they're saying, and as we know, it's a lie. Can you do that impression, but with a more arrogant voice? <clears throat> Here's what they're saying. Here's what we know. We know it's a lie. <laughs> that was good because you mixed in cocky, too. <laughs> well, 
And so to us, what is normally the end of the discussion, to us is the beginning. You're like, eh, yeah, yeah. of course, yes, there's no Sasquatch, we're adults. But what if there was? And so yeah. it's like, what would you do? Let's take this claim and let's break it down and let's explore what it's like. Or maybe, you know, sometimes maybe it's behind the scene, like, okay, this story is nonsense, but how does that story begin? Does, does Cletus, like, uh, start drinking shoe polish and then run out? Yeah. And, then, and then, like, is he covering up his embarrassment about his pants around his britches and saying, oh, goblins did it? <laughs> like, and then, uh, but but it, it's the exploration of, of of how we get there that I think is 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 the engaging thing. And today. many times, who here was uh, watching Brian's uh, uh, lecture yesterday? Right? That's Make noise. Fun. No, it's don't don't. Show. That's <laughs> uh, there's a lot of people very politely holding their hands up. Uh, but it's great on audio. It's great. Uh, <laughs> but in your lecture, you talk a lot about how easily we see things that we didn't really see. Sure, and, sure. And how easily things that are, you know, a certain set of facts turn into something else and we conflate different elements of society to make moments bigger than they are or more impossible than they are. And that is way more interesting to me than just saying like, yes, this is highly likely to be not real. Right. You know? Uh, and, and that's a, a lot of what we try to we try to get out there. Like we have had, you know, one of the things that we've gone back to a lot is goblins in Africa. I don't know if you know this, but yeah. Africa has a real f word in goblin problem. <laughs> <laughs> like just go ahead and Google search goblin Africa at any time, day or night, uh, and you will find that they are running amok over there. Uh, however, like, and as much as these stories are kind of ridiculous, and we, we look at them in at face value as they are written about and presented by you know the news reports there there's like serious crimes that are being perpetrated that blamed on unfairly on goblins yes i think it's time the goblins took responsibility <laughs> for their actions in africa uh and and i feel like we lose that and, and that was kind of a, if there was kind of a hard line element to to weird things it was that if we just make it binary we lose all that shading and, yeah. and if it's just about like, well, boo to that, then what fun is it? You well, know? and 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 I, I don't know. I, I don't want to get uh, when, when a news story comes in like this. Fifteen-year-old girl says a crazy goblin took her top off. Like at the end of the day, someone took her top off. Yes. And then that's not like like the fact that well, goblins aren't real. It's like it doesn't change. Like that's not the end yeah. of the discussion. Case closed. <laughs> That's the beginning of the discussion, not the end. Uh, so the second thing we talk about in the Weird Things podcast is factual news yeah. of the both weird and and uh, peripherally weird. Uh, I would say an actual case of weird news is uh, maybe some historical documents come up and uncovering the tale of Snake Island with yeah. a legendary, uh, I, I, and I'm almost certain I'm quoting this verbatim, 10,000 snakes per inch. Is that true? Yes. Okay. Uh, having that memorized. Yes. Uh, uh, or uh, a number of historical things. And, of course, uh, we spend uh, fully two-thirds of all our time talking about SpaceX. Which is kind of deliberate uh, in that we do it all the time. <laughs> uh, but it doesn't also, happen by accident. No, like, oh, not... How did I end up at SpaceX again? <laughs> uh, but in that, we, we talk so much about this the this kind of fantasy world of wonders that – it's easy to and, and fun for us to kind of see how seamlessly that blends into a, a real kind of like far future converging with the present situation like we see with SpaceX. And uh, I, th I think that's my favorite part of uh, weird things where we will find ourselves in a fantasy scenario. We may take a random, for example, like uh, uh, when we had the, the, the what, what very likely was going to turn out to, oh, well, most recently, what's that, what's the engine, the microwave engine that's... Uh, the M drive? Yeah. Is that it? Uh, and th 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 that seems to violate the laws me? of physics, yeah. or or the the news that neutrinos are being picked up faster than light on the other side of the world. Like, yes, we understand that. Very likely, this is within the margin of error, or whatever. But again, what is normally the end of the discussion for us becomes the beginning of speculation of where things could go. And from when there. it comes to SpaceX, I mean, that's something that is very much real. You know, we were we were lucky enough to get a tour of the SpaceX facilities a couple weeks ago, and we were completely sort of uh, blown away by their, their, their what they had there, but also 
you know, just hearing they are very, very, very uh, explorative when it comes to new technologies uh, and it, it, innovating and iterating, and it is not out of the realm of possibility. We didn't get any kind of information or anything on it, but it's like it's very within the realm of possibility that at least on some level, Elon Musk, who runs SpaceX, says to somebody, hey, you know, just look into this. Like, just try to build this just so we have an idea of, of what it's going to be because uh, – that is a huge element to their, uh, their their larger mission statement of space exploration and Mars colonization. And like the fact that that exists is, to me, as awesome as the idea of a hairy bipedal creature <laughs> roaming free through the woods of Oregon. Uh, real quick, if you missed uh, the, the episode where we recapped our tour of SpaceX, uh, those guys are so very, very serious about dying on Mars, and I couldn't be thrilled. Uh, more thrilled. Uh, they have nine foot, as we walk in, there's two nine foot tall photos side by side. One is of Mars and the other is of what looks like Earth until you realize it's just Mars greenified, terraformed, yeah. terraformed turned into to, to Earth. Like that's, I mean, this is a very serious mission statement. And like in a world where Elon Musk is a very real person spending very real billions of dollars in order to try to die on Mars, I mean, how far is that from goblins in, in Africa? Uh, they're both very weird things, is well, what we're Well, at least they'd be about as... I mean, granted, goblins running around in Africa probably is about as weird today as it was 50 years ago. <laughs> uh, now, somebody, a eccentric billionaire, uh, which I think we can say eccentric for Elon Musk, right? Since he's probably in Burning Man right now in a, in a <laughs> yeah, penis probably. sock. That's a, that's a good point. Uh, but, like, that 50 years ago... Was, was was nuts. Was far closer to goblins running around in Africa and in, in, uh, the probability and in, in how we thought about stuff like that, that we would have uh, commercial class rockets that would be as successful as they are, that would drive the prices of space travel down with, you know, and on deck we have a very interesting year ahead of us for, for people who are fans of space. Any fans of space in the audience? <laughs> <laughs> who's who's uh, shouting boo <laughs> SpaceX? All right. Uh, That's the cheapest pop at Dragon Con. <laughs> <laughs> Any fans of Dragon? <laughs> no. uh, uh, hey, speaking of which, the third part of Weird Things is we give picks every single week, whether it's a, li a real life news item, whether it's an item that we're playing with. Most recently, Andrew Main has been talking to us about uh, 3D printing and about uh, uh, VR, VR stuff, yeah. you know, uh, cardboard. And pop up books. Uh, and pop up books. A lot of pop up books. We went through stuff. about like a solid month and a half of Andrew's pop up book addition addiction. Uh, you also went through two laps of me recommending Andy Weir's The Martian. Has anyone not read Andy Weir's The Martian? It's so good, right? There are four people raising their hand. Okay, I assume right. they're the ones who have not read it. Uh, dude, uh, at any rate, uh, since we talk about picks, we should get maybe the, uh, the hosts of Sword and Laser, Miss Veronica Merritt and Tom Belmont, <laughs> to come on up and join us. Do you want Tom and Veronica to join us? Yeah! You're right. That's so much better than asking their permission. <laughs> Uh, mainly, mainly because you guys are familiar with the show. We're we're, we're really going to take your questions, and maybe if we have any picks uh, related to weird things. Uh, hey guys, how are you? Fine. You <laughs> Boy, you are fine. That's great. Uh, all right, so we're we're going to take some questions. Um, <laughs> okay, Brian. <laughs> oh boy. <Just>, uh, <laughs> it's really bright up here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so so uh, let's do. Uh, what do you guys want to do? Do you guys want to do questions to answer? You want to go into to well, weird things picks or what? Here's. Uh, I mean, we, we can. I'm sure we're gonna we're gonna go through stuff as as we questions. Get, Mike, uh, questions. somebody. So there's a mic in the middle of that there room, right? Oh my God! And there's a heavenly light for which has <laughs> emanated around it. This is the best room here in Dragon Con. That is the, that is no lie. I want uh, anybody, uh, if, if you are go? familiar with the show, you can go ahead and ask questions about the show. If uh, you are not familiar with the show and just our, you know, your interest is, is peaked in, on kind of our mission statement, uh, then go ahead on up uh, to the mic. The one thing I will ask is that you start all of your questions by naming your favorite uh, cryptid or supernatural event or happening. Yeah, uh, pretend you just finished a Facebook quiz. <laughs> you just scared uh, away the first uh, Are you a Chupacabra? <laughs> are you a Loch Ness? Are you a Bigfoot? Are you a Sassy? Are you a <laughs> Griffin? African Goblin. Gr <laughs> All right, well, we're grandfathering in the one guy who actually wanted to ask a question <laughs> and is now shying away from the microphone. 
Uh, you are allowed to go without your thing, and then maybe talk to us later. I, just a the favorite cryptid are probably things like hyper predators, where you get someone who said, well, okay, a, a squirrel needs this much territory. A thing that eats a squirrel needs this much territory. A thing that eats a thing that eats a squirrel needs mu this much territory. And you keep following their logic, and they're like, this thing eats Siberian tigers, and it only needs 190% <laughs> of the surface area of the planet to roam over. Pretty um, good, actually. We just got amazing. served. No, wait a minute. All right. <laughs> So, like, where do you read about, like, like, like where, where is this, uh, is there a, a ge uh, oh, geographical um, location where these happen? Oh, no, I'm not, the, uh, there was a book, I, I think the author's name was David Blumenthal, did The Ghost with Trembling Wings, and he was talking about he being a bi biologist and people coming up to him and, and, and him talking about, I, I guess you could call it legitimate cryptids, things that have actually reemerged that we thought were extinct. Yeah, like, certain like species a coelacanth. Or... Yeah, certain species of birds that were like, oh, it just turned out we hadn't looked hard enough. Mm -hmm. And people will come up to him and be like, what about thunderbirds that have a wingspan, like wingspan of over 2,000 feet or something like that. <laughs> what and, about and the we... fabulous thunderbirds? Yeah. <laughs> Ladies. <laughs> um... <laughs> I haven't seen them since uh, yeah. uh, uh, freaking the Texas State Fair in '84. <laughs> um, my, my my fake question is: Was there ever an episode where you were like really tired or something, and you just created a bot that no matter what um, Andrew Maine said, it just responded with snakes? <laughs> there, um, there's really should been. <laughs> yeah, there's a uh, there's kind of a reoccurring thing where, and I don't know how it started. If Andrew has like started picking them out just to see whether or not we're going to keep answering A on the multiple choice quiz uh, over and over and over again, that, it, it does tend to be one of his favorite themes of, if, um, if I may. Go ahead. Uh, this is my Andrew Main impression, <clears throat> gentlemen. <laughs> Welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Maine. Joined, as always, we have Justin Robert Young. Yeah, Justin Robert Young. <laughs> uh, and everyone else. Uh, listen, <laughs> you're in Oklahoma, and you are in a small town. There's a menace <laughs> about... Oh, really? I'm Brian Brushwood. This is a crazy problem. <laughs> Uh, Magic. Where, where? Yeah. Spoiler alert, it's snakes. It's always snakes. Oh, uh, snakes. <laughs> well, no, we've had uh, snakes in the walls. We've had, uh, I think one of my favorite ones was the, the Hell House, which uh, apparently was on top of a nesting ground that only became so populated once every 12 years. Nope. So they lived in this house for close to 10 years, and then all of a sudden, just snakes everywhere, <laughs> like... Like through the windows, like uh, uh, it was just insane. We also uh, we also heard about um, uh, uh, some some very really real things that are very cool. Uh, for example, the, uh, the there's an overnight uh, nightmare uh, terror uh, uh, sleepover. No, nope. boy, I sold that well, didn't I? <clears throat> so here, Veronica, what happens is, uh, no. and actually, it, it was just in San Francisco. No. Yes. 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 It, yes. It's, it's a touring event. You go to in a, your a campground. In Bernal Heights. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, you go to a campground and uh, you lay out, uh, like you're, you're camping there, right? But you have to understand that people will attack you in the middle of the night. And it's like kind of a scavenger oh. hunt. Well, oh. Uh, and so, <laughs> like you stay up all night and you try to solve this thing. And if you do, you become like an eternal of their, uh, their so things, things. So you can keep doing it. <laughs> so the first thing is there was something like that There's kind of where you get stuck in a room with a bunch of people yes. and you have to get out of it. So they close you in a room with no exit and you have to figure out how to get out of the room. This and is it's a, a thing time, It's a time thing and every time you find a new clue, I you get more time I would murder and it. eat everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's probably how it would have to end. Okay, to be fair, once like 15 minutes elapses in that, they open the room up again. <laughs> <laughs> so they you just would have to panic Everywhere. Very quickly. It's just like, and then second, isn't there this whole thing now about um, crisis actors? Have you heard about this? No, this sounds like a weird thing. Have you guys thing, heard though. about crisis actors? Yes. yes. All, right, All right, go on. So there's a conspiracy going on that um, in recent, a lot of a, a recent horrible events. Oh yes, no, I yeah. do. This is like a, this is an Alex Jones thing. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. 
And so there's, but there are groups that do things like you're saying where they stage horrible events, like a zombie apocalypse, for example. Yeah. The CDC did something like that, I think, down in LA. And they use actors to play the roles of people who are being you know, affected by this tragedy, yeah. by this trauma. And so now they're saying that a lot of real world traumas are actually being done by well, actors. They're faking uh, the whole thing. Crises exist and right. actors exist. Therefore, yeah. crisis uh, actors are what everyone is. This is a video label. Like Sandy Hook was all planned by the government. Oh, jeez. Things like that. Yeah. 240 inches. Yes, it was. Check them out. There's people standing at the foreground, just walking, doing nothing. Uh, right in the middle, they've... Uh, yeah, you, the more you zoom in, the more true it becomes. At the, at the marathon bombing? <laughs> <laughs> zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, come no, on. No, don't zoom in, it's I don't believe you until you zoom in. Oh, actors. No, 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 no. I'm, t I'm telling the guy who did the video to zoom in on this guy again. Every time Where are they all? Yeah, whatever, get out of here. Right down the bottom, taking photos. But anyway, so that's a, that's a thing. Uh, yeah, no, and I remember I've seen, I've seen a few... Uh, like uh, videos like that, YouTube videos where it's like people yeah. like are like coming to the microphone to speak and they see mm -hmm. them like uh, like oh smiling that looks like the other person or something and it's like like oh well your person and your family just died like why would you be laughing yeah like surely there are no kind of shock or anything related yeah. to that and then there's um this is a lot the... more depressing than the horror okay, camp well, by the way did you see an idiot abroad. Did you see the episode of An Idiot Abroad where he goes to, I believe, um, to the to the Palestinian border and he gets kidnapped by people who are faking as though he's being kidnapped in real life? Oh, no, no and that's, that's a thing, test. Yeah. yeah. So, like, if that happened to me, I would just basically poop my pants and die. No, there's... Uh, so don't do that to me. Don't so put please, me in one of these nobody scenarios. kidnap Veronica Belmont unless no. you also want to see her poop her pants and die. And die. Um, uh, hey, what, what was your question again, bro? Oh, my actual question... <laughs> sorry. Um... My actual question was, how does the, considering like the spread of podcasts you guys do, this seems like a, a, a weird, uh, apropos, intersection of it. Like, do you get, I, I can see, I, I can't see anyone having a problem with Night Attack, because you kind of go into that. With, <laughs> really? Uh, well, pardon me. <laughs> I can, put it, I I can put it this way. The podcast like, network that did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but in that case, someone is warned. But it, it feels as if. Um, it, it feels as if weird things goes back and forth between the the utterly silly, the utterly serious, um, the 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 heartbreaking and human, and then again back to silly. Do you ever feel like you're stepping on people? Because all, I feel like all your other podcasts either avoid that completely or kind of come with a disclaimer. That's well, a really it, it is. It has a lot more yeah. of. A, I think our other shows have a lot more of an even tone. Uh, you know, uh, Cord Killers is something that kind of. Started consistent. out as a as more of a, a fans look at stuff and has kind of become like what I think to be a, a very uh, reliable industry kind of thing and it has sort of that tone to it. Night Attack is a straight comedy show, but Weird Things does uh, does does shift a lot and I, I really think that it is just because of the the principles involved in it. You know, I'm always going to want to freak out about how weird the chupacabra is and whether or not he has nipples like <laughs> um, and and andrew is always going to drive things in a in a either trying the to torture brian yeah, or uh, or when he, when finally we all become robots gentlemen and shed our shabby decayed flesh yeah uh and and brian uh to his everlasting credit oh, is geez. the one who can speak both languages and uh, I mean, to a fault i can it, all that means is i get to argue with both of you <laughs> i get in genuine angry debates like where it's like unironically not as a joke like no! We should be investing in space elevators, and I don't understand why you're consumed with reusable rockets! Yes. Right, Pierce. Yes. Uh, uh, it turns out they're right. Reusable rockets <laughs> is the way to go. Uh, and by the way, that's like an actual episode. That's, that's not a that's joke. Not a joke. Yeah. That's a quote. Like that was like that was uh, like episode 24. Brian freaks out about the space <laughs> elevator. <laughs> I should uh, talk with Tom. Tom knows a lot about space elevators. No, I don't. I don't know anything about space elevators. I use them as a device. No, elevators. I didn't write a book about space elevators. Yes, I wrote you a. Did. I you wrote, wrote a the book on you space wrote a, elevators. You wrote a best-selling novel about <laughs> space elevators. I wrote a, Dude, I wrote a, a novel. New York Times Tom best Barrett novel. once wrote that any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic, and it's we're really proud of that. Page. I wrote that any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from space elevators. Yeah. <laughs> I once convinced my best friend that jackalopes were real. How did you do that? 
<laughs> Wait, look over there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Wait, do you just? How, 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 <laughs> all right, all right uh, uh, can, can, can we role play this real quick? Sure. Right. We'll we'll be your friend. Okay. Well, yeah, here, Brian, you... Brian. Brian. Brian's your friend's name. What was your friend's name? Tom. <laughs> Who's my friend's name? Who was it? Naomi. <laughs> Her friend's name was Naomi. <laughs> Naomi. All right. So Hi. Brian, you're Naomi. Let, let's let's try try a Naomi voice real quick. Hey, girlfriend. You want you want to go camping sometime? No, hey Brian, We're Brian, actually, I, I can do I can do I, Naomi. Uh, you and me, you, you, uh, you and me uh, driving cross country. I love it. I'm Naomi. Yeah, yeah. So we we're we're in the in the um in the west. We're in the southwest of the United States. I know that. I'm the one yeah. driving. No, why no, you, you are not. You were not the one driving. I'm the one oh, watching shit. you drive. Oh shit! Shots fired on Naomi. The one <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, Bitch, I, I drive that whole way. You were not driving. It's it's lovely out here with the the scrub brush. Yeah, and, you know, I'm uh, I'm amazed we haven't seen any jackalopes on this trip yet. Uh, sh- yeah, <laughs> uh, I, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, you did what? You know, the jackalope. Uh, is that a move? I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm, no, you know, they're, they're I'm like, Christian. They look like, no, you're Jewish. <laughs> I'm Jewish. Yeah. I don't know the jackalope. <laughs> no, you know, it's like, it's like a hare, like a rabbit, and it has, it has antlers on it. Uh, it's wait, like really uh, specifically designed to, to fit into the environment of the, uh, how, how big, the American how big, how big are Southwest. The they're, you know, they're maybe a third of the size of the total body length, I would say. How, how big is the body length? They're, it's a hare. You've seen an American hare. They're, you know, they're pretty big. They're bigger than a bunny rabbit. Is it, is it a pubic hare? <laughs> Naomi's not that stupid. Okay. <laughs> I say that. Sorry, I overplayed the she bit. She would never say uh, that. Okay, well, it, 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 seems like, it seems like antlers would be unlikely on, on, on what is normally... Well, we were just at that restaurant. They had, they had one mounted on the wall. They, you didn't see that? On the, the head? It was on the, on the plaque on the wall? So many, too many. I can't. Uh, 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 did they? I did. I did, did. Did you point it out to me? I did. I was like, look, there's the great American jackalope. Uh, wow. I don't care about these things when I tell you. You never listen to me. Well, I'm listening now. Oh, and wait. I want you to know. You just got real. You never <laughs> listen to me. Why don't you ever listen to me? I'm trying to teach you about nature. I, I'm not very bright, and I don't respect you and enough. And geography. Uh, all right. Um... <laughs> Anyway, she had to call her parents. <laughs> Wait a minute, why would she call her parents? Because she didn't, she believed me, but didn't believe me. Oh, okay, so you almost yeah, made her I believe. I made her, she, had, it's to, not like she, she had, had to call a lifeline. Okay, see, to me, if, if, yeah. if she believed it, like, then she's got like a bow and arrow and insists you pull over the car so she can hunt no, down it's like, it's like a Enough. reverse molder. She didn't want to believe. She didn't want okay, to believe. Okay, yeah. yeah. Right on. Yeah. Have you ever tried to fool anybody into thinking that uh, that cryptid was a that real thing? Naomi was a wild hare. That uh, that Naomi is a real. <laughs> Why? Wait, not? I don't know. Uh, no, well, no, not that I can think of. <laughs> What's your favorite cryptid? Uh, Chupacabra's high up there. Why? What, Ooh, what do you like the Chupacabra? Because I learned about Chupacabra when I was living in Austin from people who had seen it. Oh, oh yeah. Because it was just down the road, right? That was down in the, yeah, was, in the, the uh-huh. Rio Grande Valley. Exactly. Where uh, the Chupacabra was. Uh, and then it like came up on the X Files like two weeks later. Or sure. And we were all like, oh my God, that's the thing that the people. Yeah, what, was, what was that like? Was it just like, yo, dude, I saw. Okay, now here's the something. question. When, when, it when a cryptid. The goat, dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when, when a cryptid makes it to, uh, well, say the X Files, but I mean whatever similar program, is that the end of it? Because now it's a joke? Or is that the beginning of it because now re- everyone's yeah. heard of it? That's a really good case study because uh, it basically went from uh, eh, those crazy people talking about chupacabra. Like, no, no, it's real, man. My, my friend's dad's farmer friend uh, found a bunch <laughs> of goats bled dry and there was no explanation for it. Uh, and this other aunt of his had seen, you know, like it was that kind of story. And then when it came out on the X-Files, everybody's like, oh. Huh. Well, if they know about it in Hollywood, <laughs> then it must be real. Oh, so for them, maybe, it was maybe there's something to it. Well, Chupacabra's I mean, I, gone too mainstream. Well, Chupacabra it has and, now, and but at the time, it was like that was the Chupacabra's out. big totally coming out, out story. Yeah. Well, so like we're, really, we're really tossing a lot of shade on the Chupacabra here. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, over it. Sorry, buddy. Get a new bit. Uh, I was very fascinated by the Montauk Monster. The what, Montauk what monster. Is the Montauk well, here, monster? Real, real, real quick, about the Jupacabra, because in terms of whether or not uh, like Hollywood has you know, made it, uh, the, if it's the end or the beginning, there is, and somebody will be able to tell me, because I'm sure this room, somebody will know, a theory about the, the movie Species and the Chupacabra. Ben Radford. Ben Radford. Ben Radford wrote uh, a book, and in that book, it said that the initial uh, sightings for the Chupacabra, and I forget whether it's in Puerto Rico or Mexico, 
Puerto Rico. Man, this is great. We're just going to, this is the BitTorrent version of weird things. Exactly. Where it's all peer to peer. It's like, we just, we give you corrupted information and you give us the checksum it's and like then a we choose get your own adventure. There we go. Uh, <laughs> that he, uh, or sorry, the woman that saw it had previously seen the movie Species. And had described it in very similar detail, and had later, according to Radford, uh, when questioned about the similarities between the species monster and her description, like admitted that there were great similarities. She admitted to the beast. that the chupacabra was freaking was hot. Natasha Henstridge. <laughs> she admitted that the first place she saw it was in a theater. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, so, I mean, if, if that is to be believed, right, if we were to go on that theory, then Hollywood started the Chupacabra. Man, I think, I think Hollywood starts all of that stuff, and, and including, like... Now, Pierce, Hollywood starts all of this! <laughs> <laughs> False flag! It was definitely a dissenting noise. Was that from Bonnie? Probably. I grew up with the Chupacabra! Oh, Bonnie, Bonnie went to school with the Chupacabra. Oh, my she goodness. had a pet Chupacabra uh, growing up. Chupacabra was voted most likely to be declared a cryptid. <laughs> uh, oh man, there's uh, too many directions to go. Uh, somebody, got, somebody ask a question, good, because uh, otherwise I'm going to start saying what I want to say. All right, here we go. We have somebody coming down the aisle. Let's give them a hand. This is the song for the guy that's walking down the aisle. To go with the favorite cryptids thing, Hop Hopkinsville's Goblins. I always thought that was what? very interesting. The Wait, Hopkinsville's Goblins? Hopkinsville's Goblins? Hop Enlighten yeah. us, sir! Uh, farmhouse, bunch of people having a grand old time, aliens come over the roof, they shoot one. Aliens? Grand time. Yeah. Wait, so aliens and goblins? They're called the Hopkinsville's Goblins, but they're aliens because they came in from the woods, got on the roof, that's jumped around. That's not where around. aliens come from. That's, that's what they is. <laughs> that's where they said they came from. That's bullshit. <laughs> Whoa. hey -o. Dude, but, that's uh, a good one. Okay, wait, hold that's on. Fine. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, they don't walk attack walk, walk me through this uh, one more time. So, farmhouse. They're all in a farmhouse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're all in a farmhouse. They're, uh -huh. If I remember correctly, they're all eating dinner and whatnot, having a grand old time. Hear a knock on the roof. They're like, oh, what? what uh, 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 may, may we? Will, will you guide us through this? Because uh, it, it set the scene, if you will, Andrew Maine. Imagine, Imagine if you will. <laughs> yeah. You're in a field. Oh, hey guys! No we're getting Alabama. drunk in this field here, right? Yeah, yeah. being drunk is great. What's up? I love fields. Tall boys. We, lo we love fields. Yeah. Field. You're with your family and your friends. <laughs> oh. Man, you I love inside. you like my brothers and sisters. <laughs> yeah, we out. all are related. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad cousins can marry. <laughs> you go inside for another slice of that delicious turkey pie. What? As you're inside, you hear a knock on the roof. Now, old uncle, whatever his name is, Brian. is like, huh, well, I wonder what that could be. Huh. Oh, I wonder what that could be! <laughs> What's the matter? Pass me the turkey pie! <laughs> Goes outside, sees lights on the roof, sees something on the roof that doesn't quite belong. Hey! Ah! <laughs> we just had that retiled! There's lights on that roof! <laughs> Everybody, get outside! We're going to see something that's hard to verify. <laughs> Are we all sufficiently drunk to be confused about what we may or may not see? Apparently I make it out with my niece. <laughs> <laughs> he runs back inside, needs a new pair of pants. Why? Oh, hey. these pants! <laughs> they're insufficient. Wait, they're white! It's after Labor Day! <laughs> you need to change those now! What am I, a waiter? <laughs> Get inside! I'm gonna change into some corduroys. <laughs> Being Very with the locale of where they are, they immediately grab their shotgun and do the smart thing and shoot it. Shoot the thing we don't understand! <laughs> <laughs> this is the only way we show it who's boss! <laughs> it's our way! <laughs> it might be Mexican! <laughs> that was an the indictment I'm against not, racism, I'm by the way. I'm not laughing at that joke. <laughs> what? What, you pro-racist? I'm confused. Uh -huh. Stalemate, no. sucker. It's like, no, it's just a hobby. <laughs> okay. So we shoot Amateurs. the things we don't understand. We shoot at the things, so we hit the things. You, they hit the thing and it fell okay. on the roof. Oh my god, you hit the thing. Oh so we hit. We got it. a confirmed kill, but who knows what happened to it. Oh, we it got it. off we, the roof, oh, it's so but delicious. I saw it bleed. And if it bleeds, we, <laughs> we can, can kill, kill it. it. <laughs> <laughs>
They call the sheriff. She, sheriff calls them out on it, and they're like, uh, "No, that actually happened." All right, no, whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. How does the sheriff call them out on it? Uh, hey, uh, I understand y'all done some shooting over here. Yeah, yeah. I was. Uh... Ain't no law gets that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you're, uh, you're just shooting at the sky. Ain't no wrong with shooting at the sky. No, I had a very, oh, you had a very interesting night that involved pants, <laughs> creatures on my roof that I shot. Uh, well, uh, you can shoot your roof tiles. Ain't no wrong with that. Hell I mean, no. What? There ain't nothing wrong with that. <laughs> as long as it's only the empty roof you was shooting. Is it? The Declaration of Independence said we could do three things: live it, love it. Shoot those goddamn roof tiles off. <laughs> but that's not Tell why you were shooting, shooting Uncle. <laughs> Tell them why you were really shooting. I was shooting. I wasn't shooting roof tiles. What? You think I'm a goddamn idiot? Wait, uh, why? <laughs> Wait, what? What's wrong with shooting roof? What, what did you shoot? You know how much he paid Wade to retile that roof? Yeah, I know. This guy thinks I'm a real looky too. Yeah, the first thing I'm going to tell you what. What? I shot... I can't even understand them anymore. The Hopkinsville <laughs> Goblin. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> then what happened? Sheriff was like, that can't possibly be real. That can't possibly be real. Okay. Hell, it won! <laughs> and then? But the sheriff is inclined to believe them because they all need new pairs of pants. They're all scared. <laughs> I don't know. Y'all look real freaked out. I'm inclined to believe all y'all. Absolutely. Be look at this double-stitched quarter of pants. <laughs> I just bought it and soiled it at the yeah. same time. <laughs> And see. Uh, uh, so, what's your question? <laughs> what is your f guilty pleasure cryptid? Like, you know they don't exist, but deep down you're like, mm, I really want that to exist. That's a really good question. I'll go. And that also go. extends Yo, to hoaxes and conspiracies yeah. if you can't think of like a good uh, cryptid. W uh, Whitley Strieber's The Greys. Oh, yeah, yeah dude. Yeah, yeah. Like, He's such a good fiction writer, and he doesn't stop with his nonfiction. It's like I really, re I really want those to be real. Like I want those to be the elves that you know, like they inspired all the folk tales because they've been visiting us and keeping track. That would just be. So there there was a there was a book like, and what's funny is uh, that's a weird conundrum because like so much of that mythos uh, has to do with like uh, alien abduction and and cross species uh, uh, sexual experimentation and so on. And uh, uh, there Wait, was a that's book. not why I liked it, bro. No, you no, didn't no, no, go no. right I, there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and specifically, I remember in high school reading a book. Uh, and so, uh, I think it's called Night Eyes. <laughs> You've by, read many books, but uh, yes, yeah, right. <laughs> I read a book once, Tom, uh, and it wasn't yours. Uh, I remember reading a book Gar in Garfield high school. Reeves was. Stevens, uh, a, I wrote about. I want to say Night Eyes, in which he postulated that they would be time traveling humans from such a uh, uh, far in the future where it's like they're no longer able to sexually reap his ridiculous premise. But uh, it tied into like, like that's why there would be cross-species sexual experimentation. I thought that was interesting. I, I read a theory that Whitley Strieber's greys and the people, because there are you know multiple people who describe them and there's lots of good reasons why that actually happens. But one person's explanation was that uh, if you created a bipedal sentient dinosaur race, they would look like the greys. And therefore, they must have existed before uh, the extinction of the reptiles and escaped to Mars to live. Mm. Wow, that sounds badass. legit. <laughs> yeah, right? Uh, all right, wait. Uh, so do you guys have your... Uh, I don't know. I, I always... I always I, I, there, this is not one that I... That I uh, certainly, it's, it's not a pet cryptid, but it's one that I've always strove to even begin to comprehend, and it's the idea that there are li lizard people living among us, and that many of them are politicians. <laughs> They're yeah. the dinosaur people! Yeah! Uh, like I feel like we're working with the same through line here. Yeah. You, know, you have bipedal uh, dinosaurs. You got now, two legs. Now they're Joe we're Biden. love. They're Joe Biden. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, what about you? What's, wait, what about you? you got I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I don't think it really counts. But wait, wait, no, no, cancel mine. Unicorns, unicorns, they're awesome. <laughs> Going for the unicorn vote. Yeah. Cheap pop. Uh, I didn't oh, there's a that. unicorn here. <laughs> or is that, oh, you're just pandering unicorn now. Unicorn believes. <laughs> or is that a narwhal? Yeah. Unicorn. Unicorn, sorry. All right, it's not, I don't think it's what you're looking for. I don't believe in them, but I kind of want there to be ghosts. Oh. That was my pick. Really? Because they are the, like, 
like in the same way that it's very easy to write crappy Superman comics because he's overpowered yeah. and you can just get caught up in it and yeah. it's like you can just expand his powers to everything. It's like, oh, he's super strong, which means he can also fly around the world and turn back time. You know, right. uh, ghosts are just so ill-defined and overpowered that we really don't know an exact handle on like what they do, right? Yeah. What's what's the quote of and somebody uh, BitTorrent? Uh, who's the guy that said I'm not I, I don't believe in ghosts, but I'm afraid of them? I said that just now. Yeah, yeah. If, if you didn't, I, I would say that. Uh, as well. No, I totally believe that because it's like you know, I, uh, you know, it's uh, uh, yes. There's no ghosts, was, but I also, was, what was that? I was totally obsessed with Ed and Lorraine Warren when I was a kid. Uh -huh. Like they, I was obsessed with them. I like, read like all their books. I read everything about them, and I was pretty convinced when I was like seven and eight years old that ghosts were like a serious real. I thing. mean, I was reading R.L. Stein. Yeah, who's the represent? No, but yeah, it's it's like. It freaks me out still. Like I've done, I've gone on like ghost hunts and stuff like yeah. that, and live for fun. And I, you know, I, I, my science brain is like, this cannot really be real. But right. at the same time, I'm like, ooh. <laughs> well, and that's I mean, it's so <laughs> easy to creep yourself out. And, and, yeah. and, and by the way, for the record, one of the things that I really enjoy about weird things is that is that no matter what the situation, we're willing to give it the old college try. And this was pre weird things. But uh, our friend Brett the Amtrak of Rounceville had the opportunity to stay in Wolf Manor, uh, which was uh, f for his travel blog, which is allegedly haunted or whatever. And there was this great moment where it's like we set up, we set up all these votive candles, we did a Ouija board, we recorded all this stuff, and it turns out we were v visited by the ghost of uh, UTUS. And when we asked him where the Cheez Its were, he said <laughs> KEK7, uh, which, uh, and then to find out where the Cheez Its were, uh, <laughs> holding two dowsing rods, uh, <laughs> with all sincerity, uh, uh, Brett sits there and says, Oh, ghost of Eunice, KEK7, where are the Cheez-Its? Just tell us which way the Cheez-Its are. We implore you with all our heart to please, in all sincerity and friendship, tell us which way the Cheez-Its are. And he goes for like three minutes straight, and they're just point, they're, they're not moving. And then finally he goes, well, I guess they're that way. <laughs> that crafty Eunice. Classic Eunice. Well, but were there cheese hits? I'm <laughs> somewhere in that direction, no. I assume. Uh, but I guess that's the other thing is like just because uh, just because you know the outcome of a book doesn't mean I mean you know yes we all know the spoiler alert is the thing isn't real but that doesn't mean well, it's but not also, a, I mean, like, a blast to, to play those games and and in terms of ghosts when you look at how we interpret them like they can be very very crappy and there is uh, I'm sure if you search on uh, you know Amazon Kindle Direct Publishing you can find many uh, romance novels that are crappy about ghosts oh yes would you <laughs> like me to tell you about some oh I'm sorry the host of Vaginal Fantasies here. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but uh, on the other hand, you know, you get uh, you know, Star Wars and, you know. You yeah, know. there's ghosts in Star Wars. Y'all hate Star Wars? <laughs> Not talking about the prequels. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and, like, that was ghosts done really well that we all really liked. Yeah. Uh, any other questions? Otherwise, we're going to start reading our ghost fan fiction. <laughs> oh, here we go. We got a, right. we got a, we got a twofer. No. Ooh, uh, was, uh, no. First on crisis actors, uh, I actually got interviewed by NBC one time. Were you uh, a crisis actor? I was in a crisis, and when I saw myself later, I thought I looked like the biggest asshole ever. Mm. <laughs> the biggest <maker? laughs> Insensitive, looked like I was laughing, just the nerves get to you, so. Yeah. Uh, but on, on, the, uh, on the military, uh, what do you think about the fact that the military conspiracies, because if, if you have five, I'm in the military, if you have 500 of us on a ship, the fact that we would keep secret Blowing something out of the air just seems to be the most ludicrous thought process ever because we can't really keep anything. We're secret. not really. <laughs> That's group. what they want you to think. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is that I mean, off? Ta is that off topic or? No, no, no. I think because because conspiracies are certainly a gigantic part of, of of weird things. We talk about that a lot, and and the crisis actors are very much you know a part of that, but. I guess, and there's and a way. Can, can you picture the crisis actors like they're like extras in the union? They're sitting there, and they're like, "Can you believe this craft service?" Yeah. <laughs> Freaking. Oh my God! Right, I'm gonna <laughs> stop. I'm gonna. There's only really offensive ways to go with this scenario. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> and they involve Seven Up at Sandy Hook. Uh, all right. All right. So, 
I think, and there's plenty of research to, to support the idea that large groups are like literally the most inefficient way to keep any kind of secret. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, we are inherently in this society where you know the barrier for communication is is so low, uh, it's you know seems far increasingly improbable. You know, and not to say that there's not collusion on stuff because collusion happens every day on things, but in general, the big stuff, the things that really, really move the needle in the way that we think are, and pardon the horrible uh, adjective, sexy kind of conspiracies, uh, are, they seem highly improbable to me. <laughs> well, and, and uh, it seems like, um, I don't know, mysteries and legends live in the gaps between uh, what person, what a person knows and, and what they can see in front of them. And, uh, and, and anything in the middle is wizardry or can be made into a, 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 you know, a, a lie or whatever. Like, uh, for example, I don't understand how Newtonian physics can propel a gigantic building-sized object to the moon. I do understand that that smirk looked a little bit weird during that press conference. Yeah. <laughs> and so because one of those things falls into the things I understand category and the other one does not, uh, you know, constructing a narrative with a conspiracy theory, ten, you know, with the crisis actor thing, uh, tends to be seductive. Well, and in the weird things kind of lens of it. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, I was just gonna say like there's lots of things that don't make sense when they're when you don't know why they work. Uh, the coffee nap. Did you hear about this? No. I've been talking about it all weekend. Best so thing ever. apologies to anybody who's heard me. Coffee but nap. They did a they did a metadata study of of all of these studies about sleep and drinking caffeine, and they found that if you drank a cup of coffee immediately before taking a 20 minute nap that at the end, you were actually more alert than if you had just had the coffee or just had the nap. Wow. Because it actually clears out uh, the adenosine from your system when you nap. So by the time the caffeine works its way through your digestion and gets to the synapses, there's no adenosine for it to compete with. This and is it, the best you, news ever. You get, you, get the full, you get the full brunt of the coffee, and so you wake up from the nap, which has refreshed you, uh, and this is like when coffee, Sonic like... turns himself into a ball and just charges <laughs> up. <laughs> and then you wake up and you are ready to carpe diem. Like... Yeah. <laughs> and so, and so the, it's like, take a coffee, take coffee before I take a nap? That's a, what a horrible what? idea. But it actually turns out to be a great idea. Uh, uh, real quick, before we get off the, the large conspiracy theory thing, and what separates conspiracy theories, because we don't talk about it a ton on, on weird things, and we, we, very, we very rarely have gotten Mainly because we don't like those angry, angry corrective emails from I mean, Alex Jones, <laughs> our biggest fan. <laughs> I've listened to your show, boys, and I, I really do believe that you are wrong on this. <laughs> uh, you were right on the Chupacabra. You were right on the Sasquatch. You are right on the Sasqu- uh, Sasquatch's sister. Uh, the snake's a little bit weird, uh, but, uh, uh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> uh, but I think the reason why we don't talk about it is because the idea of Bigfoot running free is kind of a Harmless. fun idea, you know? I mean, unless he's like, you know, doing something horrible to people or murdering them or something. Not like, like those African goblins, am I right? Exactly. Oh. Uh, it's racist. Like, <laughs> <laughs> The idea of a of a several hundred person conspiracy theory for like profit or like you know tilting our culture or, or politics or something is like a profoundly depressing idea, right? Like, mm-hmm. there's really not a whole lot of fun and like, yeah, we'll pull this one over on him unless you use even, that voice even for the larger, entire time. Like, <laughs> like culture, larger cultural conspiracies, like they think everyone within under a certain umbrella like has the same plan to like overthrow like like you know the what gays it, in Hollywood like they have the big plan to overthrow Hollywood like they don't go together in meetings and like get together and decide how they're gonna take over Hollywood you know like things don't work like that so you have or a question ma'am I do um, I would like to ask you um, on all serious levels yes you're a lot of fun I love this particular panel um, but I really do have a serious concern about superstitions from Africa relating to albinos and you know how this are is you new to me it is yeah oh no, yeah no, no, no there's I, like I mean there are plenty <clears throat> it is it, in, in, in the smorgasbord very troubling things in Africa <laughs> yeah yeah well it occurred to me that um, maybe some of your energy could you know help us figure out what to do to stop all of the superstitions related to albinos um, there's 
myths um, that parts of the body of an albino would help make a man more virile. All right. And uh, it always goes back to yeah. that with all this stuff, right? It's just all boner pills. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's like, we solved that one, boys. Yeah, no, we have it's actual only, boner pills. It's $5 pill. a pill. <laughs> it's uh, like, you don't need to be sawing off elephant faces or murdering <laughs> albinos. <laughs> like, sir. we have them. We won. <laughs> Merry Christmas. War is over. <laughs> Like, no, I would rather skin a tiger and eat it alive. Yeah. I mean, unfortunately... Anyway, back to the serious topic of <laughs> the systematic murder of the other. Uh, um, man, that's tough because it's like, uh, you know, the question is like, what's our role? Because uh, uh, my guess is we don't have a lot of, 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 of murderous villagers listening to the Weird Things podcast. Uh, uh, and... <laughs> <laughs> and so if we have a role to contribute, it's in being a, uh, you know, the, the gateway drug to skepticism because we, we lie in that cross section between a lot of people who listen to the Weird Things podcast uh, are fans of, uh, you know, they only know, th you know, these, these, these crazy crackpot uh, theories and they follow all of these cryptid things. And we're the first person to say like, yeah, man, these things are awesome, right? Also, here's scientifically why we know they don't work. But anyway, uh, isn't he awesome? Yeah. And, and that's, for some people, the first time they've ever heard that. And, and, and to us, uh, you know, we, we, we sort of have to be that bro that can be the first one that says, you know, hey, man, it's okay to be gay. Uh, and then, uh, that was a very specific, odd example. Uh, <laughs> but my point is, is we can be the first person that they hear say, uh, yeah, it's awesome, also not real. Well, and also... At the heart of, I think, all of our shows that, that we, I, I know I do with Brian, especially any time that you get into serious kind of like life or death sort of stuff, even if we're taking a humorous slant on it, uh, it boils down to having a good heart about it and, and understanding that, you know, humanity is important, that personal rights are important, and that is where the, the superstition is overtaking those elements. And... There, uh, there's obviously a limited scope. Uh, believe me, I, I've seen our numbers um, <laughs> that, that we can do. Uh, but if just those people that listen to us from whatever end of the spectrum they, they are on understand that it's okay to think about these things and have fun with these things and keep them at the forefront of your mind and not run away from them or just you know turn off your brain if it gets too complicated, uh, then I think we are doing about as good as we can do, or at least that's what I tell myself while I'm not stopping albinos from being murdered in Africa. <laughs> I love this idea that, you know, these kinds of conspiracy theories and myths and superstitions lie in the cracks and the crevices of our understanding uh, where there are gaps and that somebody could be looking into those gaps and looking into those conspiracies and find you and Andrew and Brian uh, looking back at them going like, hey. <laughs> hey, look at this. They're called melon heads. Can you believe it? Uh, all right, do we have time? We got time for a couple more questions. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Waylon Utani. Yeah, What's your name, buddy? John. Where are you from? Charlotte. What's your favorite cryptid? The squonk. Uh, you got me go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is the skunk? The squonk. 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 Spell What's it. What's the squonk? Wait. Use it in a no sentence. Q. <laughs> <laughs> Squ is it like a squirrel? <laughs> it's like a squirrel. <laughs> squonk? Is it ha herring? <laughs> the squonk Heroin? is very sad. <laughs> uh, okay, tell us about the tale of the squonk. The squonk, squonk is uh, tied into the question I wanted to ask you guys. Is it, is it an unseen energy or force said to be the basis of all music creativity from the pre-Macedonian lore related to those that are deeply driven by musical ambition? Because if it isn't, sorry. <laughs> no. <laughs> then you, sir, have a busy evening of editing Urban Dictionary. <laughs> Good. That's Tell us about the squonk. Hobby. The squonk is a lumberjack legend from when they were. I swear oh, to God, you guys I'm gonna, don't I'm know about lumberjack I want you. This is there's friggin' Urban Dictionary right there. Call it that stuff. I'm just saying. Awesome. How'd you all spell right, squonk? So you're a lumberjack and you're okay. You squonk all night and you squonk all day. <laughs> It's from when they were pushing back the frontier of America and they were you know, going into the wilderness and they wanted to make the wilderness more interesting. Uh, so they made up a bunch of Because there wasn't creatures. enough trying to kill them. No, not enough. Okay. No, oh, not squank, squonk. Squonk. Right. 
Sorry, dear Fuhrer. <laughs> Jeez. That's why. What is wrong with you? <laughs> Could you just spell it for him? He had it right, except for the A. No. It's no. He spelled squank. S Q. Yeah. U O N K. Who cares? Song. Whatever. Right. So it's not lumberjacks real. are lumberjacking. <laughs> the lumberjacks be lumberjacking. Lumber, lumberjacks and the next be lumberjacking. thing you know, they're like, oh, do they, so they're making up these legends? Yeah. They're okay. making up these legends, and the squonk is supposedly a creature so hideous and so ugly that it feels nothing but shame about its appearance. Oh. We and call it just a Robert Young. <laughs> Aww. If squonk anyone ever. Sad. <laughs> Squonk no look like the girls in the magazines. <laughs> okay. But if anyone ever sees the squonk, yeah. it starts crying so hard <laughs> that it melts into a pool of liquid sad. I swear to God, this is half of all the podcasters I know. <laughs> half? Have you all right, seen so hold my on. number? <laughs> why we do audio. <laughs> Have you seen the YouTube comments? This is the weirdest thing I've heard in a really long time. It's a very like, emo lumberjack legend, right? <laughs> you think the lumberjack legend would be like, oh, you ever heard of the, the punching beaver? <laughs> beaver comes out, punches you right in the face, and you say, what? <laughs> I'm, lumberjack. I'm a lumberjack. What about the self-deprecating dwunkle? Yeah. <laughs> but... My question was the about courteous creatures. cranery. <laughs> oh, can I get that for you? Similar to the squonk, like uh, the splinter cat, which is a cat that runs into trees so hard that it makes them explode. Nope. Nice. Uh, okay. And the hoop snake, which is a snake that bites its own tail and it's razor sharp fins, and so it spins around like Xena's chakram. I swear to God, do you just want to join That's the Weird cool. Things podcast permanently? <laughs> <laughs> so these are all things that they made up. Yeah. And on the well, other who's hand, they, who's from they? The, the lumberjacks that built America. Oh yeah, I thought this was the a new conspiracy theory. Oh. <laughs> it's like the, the cryptid cabal. <laughs> but hey, we need a new cryptid. Uh, give me something with scales. What you got? <laughs> Meanwhile, at the cryptid cabal. <laughs> I, I would need... watch the crap out of that. Yeah, it's right. It's got it's got it's me splinter cat. <laughs> It's like Rita Repulsa, she needs a new monster every week. Yeah. I like Sorry, that. Did, did you have a question? I did. I did have a question. I did, I promise. All right. Um, but saying squonk is fun anyway. Yeah. We've certainly you know, gotten about 10 minutes out of it. <laughs> the question was what do you guys think makes that kind of difference between a, a cryptid, like, I'm going to say legitimate cryptid? Yeah. Something that people Oh, you're talking, this, this is not a cryptid problem. This is a branding problem, <laughs> which is yeah. what it is. It kind of is, because Listen, there's Listen, kid, like I see a lot of cryptids come in here. They say they got the goods. You got the bug eyes, you got the scaly teeth, you got hair out your backside, all these great things. But listen, if you want to make it in this business, you're going to have to suck some goats, know what I'm saying? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Adolphus McMurray, cryptid agent to the stars. Listen, the chupacabra, old chupy, he was nothing before he came to me. I said, you go, you suck them goats down. He said, I can't do that here. I said, go down to Mexico, all right? <laughs> Next thing you know, he's on the X-Files. <laughs> you know what he used to do? <laughs> Bite tin cans. <laughs> You're not gonna make it to Hollywood biting tin cans, buddy. <laughs> That needs to be a web comic. Yeah. <laughs> Adolphus McMurray, is that Adolphus his name? McMurray, cryptid yeah. agent to the stars. <laughs> but that was kind of the question. You know, what makes the cut? What, what, uh, when what do you makes a good cryptid? Yeah, when do you decide that, you know, yes, I'm going to believe I mean, danger. Real. Listen, 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 listen. Oh, listen. Oh, right, if you want to know what makes for a star, you make an appointment like everyone else, all right? You don't come <laughs> in and ask Adolphus McMurray right now how to make a video. Get out of here. What are you doing? <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, uh, do you have a real point? I mean, danger seems to be an element danger, of it, Danger, right? totally yeah. danger. immediate yeah. threat. The middle name of every cryptid. <laughs> <laughs> I think some, it has to be close enough that it can almost, that you can, like, 
it can almost be real. Well, yeah. and also the good cryptids have something uh, that uh, is a clue that you can run across in the wild, right? So it's it's almost like you uh, have this mnemonic device where whenever you see, I mean, Bigfoot's a perfect example because, uh, or the Yeti, because people walk in the snow, which means there's snow, and then the snow melts and the feet get big, and you're like, ah, big feet. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect, right? Well, I think uh, also, I mean, there is. It's like all news is local, right? Like yeah. we have. We, we see gigantic scars on the side of, like, beached whales for creatures that we have not actually seen, you know? And they're at the bottom of the ocean, and they're probably horrifying and terrifying, and way more uh, of the monsters that we worry about in Loch Ness or something like that that gets all the publicity. It's far away from us, and we will likely never see it in our lifetime. However, the idea that right outside your door there could be something that you've never seen before... Mm. That's, I think, what, what partly makes it super crazy. You know, Especially and, and if you're a tin can. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, guys, right. we're out of time. I want to thank Veronica Belmont and Tom Merritt for joining us on stage, helping to keep everything afloat. We, of course, want to thank uh, Andrew Maine. Uh, may he rest in L.A. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, he, he actually, we were going to Skype him in uh, on this, and he wound up uh, falling so ill that uh, he died. Aww. And uh, <laughs> Jesus. No, and if you, uh, if you all pray hard enough, he'll be back next yes, week. If we all clap three times and say the singularity, the singularity. <laughs> uh, he will rise again. So uh, I want everybody to go ahead, if you if you have Twitter, go ahead and at reply Andrew Mann and say that you missed him here on this panel. Uh, but uh, Weird Things comes out usually on Mondays. So if you haven't listened to it, then go ahead and find us on iTunes. Go to weirdthings.com. To get all the links there as well as the RSS feed. Uh-huh.